All right, so this is the derivation of that term exergy. You start with the system, and you want to know the exergy of that system. Well, you have to have the environment because the system has to go into equilibrium with the environment. And so the environment's at the dead state temperature, T naught and P naught, but the system doesn't start there. It starts at T and P. But it eventually, at the end of the process, gets there. Now, during that process, there could be heat transfers and work transfers. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to, this sounds silly at first, but we're going to put the heat transfer into the system from the environment. The signs will work themselves out. Okay? And the reason we're doing that, we're going to put a little focus of the study. Why do I put a dashed line around the system? That's my focus of the study, and I'm going to write the first law for that system and the second law for that system. See? And I already now know I have a transfer across the boundary of that system. It's called a Q. And from the point of view of that blue enclosed little control mass, closed system, it's positive in. That's why I put the positive in. It could be negative out, no problem. Another is we're going to say that we have the work of the system, and it goes all the way out because it can raise a weight in the field. Do something really, really useful. And I'm going to put another work this way, which really just put a B on that work, W sub B. Why a subscript B? Because it just pushes back the environment. It's a boundary work, integral PDB, and it just pushes back the environment. So what's the work is really two components. One is the useful work. You could have put WU there. But they put WC there in the textbook, trying to be consistent with the textbook. So when you read the textbook, you match up what was said in lectures and things make sense. Now the question is, is why did they put a subscript B on the W? Boundary work. Why did they put a subscript C on the W? Useful work. C is for useful. That doesn't make sense. Why didn't they put a U there? combined. It's out of the combined environment system system. How do you like that? <laughs> but it's out of the combined system. That's the useful work. Okay, so what do we do is we write down the first law and we write it down for what I have in the blue little control mass. It's just the system, okay? So the system starts at Initial state one and goes to final state two. Sometimes you'll write it like this. The change in the total energy is equal to Q minus W. Okay, well, what's the change in the total energy? It's the change in internal plus the change in kinetic plus the change in potential. So the change in internal is U2 minus U1. Change in kinetic, EKE2 minus KE1 plus change in potential, PE2 minus PE1. That's all. Everything expanded on that left-hand side of the equal sign. Then we have the heat transfer into the system during the process from 1 to 2. Sometimes I put the 1 to 2. Sometimes it's like too many subscripts. Let's just say it's Q. And then we're going to subtract off the non-useful boundary work pushing back the environment. And what comes out of the... See, that's why we have two negative signs. They're both out of the system. One is the boundary. One is the combined useful work. Do you like that? First law, does it make sense? Now we adapt those subscripts. We start at state, current state. We go to what state? The system goes to the equilibrium, dead state. So really, this 2 becomes 0. That 2 becomes 0. That 2 becomes 0. True? Now you tell me, what is the kinetic energy of our system at the dead state? What's It's 0. So you can just throw that away. What is the potential energy of our system at the dead state? By definition, both of those terms are zero. Now, just like we did, we could have put one to two here. What we can do is we say, you know what? This one here is just excessive. The one here is excessive. The one here is excessive. So first law of thermodynamics can be written like this. U naught minus U minus Ke minus PE equal to Q minus WB minus WC. Thumbs up if you agree. 
Did I make an error anywhere? Signs all right? Where did the other internal energy come from? Well, it's a delta U here, and it goes to the dead state. So it's U's, it's, this is U2 minus U1, but for this problem, it's U0 minus U. Because the book doesn't put a subscript 1 for the starting state. It's just trying to get the exergy of the starting state. So that's how, it's a little tricky, isn't it? Now we deal with the second law. Can we do the second law? And I'm going to put it up in this corner. So the second law applied to the system, what's enclosed in the blue dash line. Can you write down the second law from memory for a closed system undergoing a process? Final entropy minus the initial entropy. The entropy can be increased due to a heat transfer in over the boundary temperature, the boundary temperature, plus any irreversibilities that might be during that process coming in. True? Uh, how do you like that second law? Thumbs up if you like it. Do I have anything wrong with it? Is it okay? Is it S2 minus S1 equal to Q divided by TB plus sigma? We got a couple yeses. That's great. Now we're going to do the same thing for this problem. That's zero. For this problem, that just goes away Okay, because we're not emphasizing it. Okay. And then we can rewrite this equation to put Q is equal to. Now, the other thing is, where, what about this temperature at which the heat is transferred across? It's across, not, it's across, you can think of making this slightly enlarged and uh, control mass around that system such that this temperature is the dead state temperature, T naught. Okay. Um, so now we can write that this is. Um, um, I'm going to put minus T naught times S minus S naught. I know I threw a couple of negative signs there and moved that T naught up. Uh, minus T naught times sigma. I'm going to stop. I wanted to conserve space, so I did about two lines of algebra and one line of algebra. Do you follow, or did I make a mistake? Maybe I should make a mistake and then let you find it. How do you like that? Okay, I'll make a mistake. Professor, I think that needs to be a, a minus sign. You're absolutely right. Thank you for catching my mistake. Um, thumbs up if you agree. Couple. Good. All right. Now that was the second law. Guess where we're going to put that Q? Right there. But before we put the Q there, let's work on WB. Because we can think about what is the boundary work. It's pushing back the boundary. The magnitude that WB is the integral P dV from initial state 1 to final state 2, or from initial state nothing to final state dead. The pressure comes outside because the boundary pressure is P naught. So we pick up we pick up that WB is equal to P naught times V naught minus the initial volume V1. Do you like it? Thumbs up if you agree. All right, so now we're going to put that right there. So let me do this. I'm going to put this guy over to the other side. So I'll have WC all by itself. And then I'll put in for this other one, which will be U minus U naught. See, I brought in, I'm kind of flipping it around a little bit, but I have U minus U naught, okay? Then I have plus P naught. B minus B dot. So if you wanted to track all of these, this guy, they came there.
This one came there with a minus sign. Don't forget the minus sign in front of the WB. That allowed me to switch the place of the Vs. Then we substitute for the Q. And when we substitute for the Q, we get minus T naught, S minus S naught. Then I'm going to finally bring over these ones, way over, these over. So K, put the plus KE and the plus PE. And the very last term is left out was the minus T naught sigma. Yes, sir. Because um, it's it's the environment, it's the non-useful pushing back the environment. So it's always just pushing back against pressure P, not just pushing back against pressure P not. Now you may think, um, well. Let's say the piston is at a, the gas that's inside of a piston that's pushing back the environment is at a higher pressure. Great. Then what you have is an excess or a force imbalance on across that piston. Use the force imbalance to lift the weight in the gravitational field, which is now contributing to the useful work. But the non-useful part of it is only matching P naught times the delta V. Okay. At this point. If you wanted to have the maximum useful work, what do you do to the irreversibilities? Well, wouldn't wouldn't it be better if sigma was negative? I mean, if you made negative large number, right, then I have a negative negative. Isn't that help? But the minimum that sigma can be is zero. You were right in the first place. I'm trying to trip you up. So. If you have sigma equal to zero, what does that mean? No irreversibilities. Everything is reversible. And so sigma must be greater than or equal to zero. If you set it equal to zero, then you find the maximum use of a work is equal to this group of terms. They looked at that group of terms. They said, hey, property, 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 property. It's just a property. Let's call it a new name. We will call it the... What's the name of that property? Exergy. exergy. That's just the definition of the term exergy. So WC is equal to E, exergy. By definition, that's exergy. So there it is. So if you look back where we started, this is the definition of exergy. Congratulations, you've now sat through and watched somebody derive it.